Okay, well, we're going to do something special today. What did you guys get to do this week? Yeah, they don't sound too excited. <laughs> what did you get to do this week, Annabelle? You got to learn? Well, how did you learn? From your teacher, and your teacher was where? In her classroom. Good grief. Where did you guys go today or this week? School, right? School. Every word but school. All right. And Jack, you are in, are you in, not preschool yet. Why? Why did I say Jack? It's white Jack. Um, can you tell Penny that you're going to go to preschool tomorrow for the first time? You are. Oh, wow. Give me five. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, we are all going to be going off to school. Did you know, if you look at all these people out here, that if they were to tell you that they're out of school, they'd be lying? Because every day is a new learning opportunity, right? We're never out of school. And we've got a bunch of retired school teachers here. Guess what she used to teach? Close. Kindergarten for 13 years and then first grade. That's kind of so I think all the people she got to touch. Well, I have a little slideshow here, and we're going to do a backpack blessing, but before that, okay. So I put together just a quick little slideshow of pictures that I did have. Sorry, I didn't have one of Donnie. But this was Chantel yesterday at graduation. So she graduated with an educational leadership degree. You know what? She was going to teach FFA, but then God had other ideas. And so he kind of rounded her a little bit in leadership, which means she can still teach, only instead of in just a classroom or one class, she can teach everybody everywhere. And so those are just some pictures. I put those up because I thought maybe some people would like to see them if they don't have Facebook. And then Ashley is going off to college. Have you even thought of college yet? No? That's a crush your mind yet. How about you? A little bit. How about you? Nope. <laughs> well, she is now going to Oklahoma Wesleyan University. She's going to play beach volleyball, and she's going to study to be a second grade teacher. Okay? Then we have Brooke. Her first day, she's going off to McCool to be a junior. I threw that in. You know who that is? <laughs> That's the three girls when they were little. And actually, the one over there was when we first moved back to York. So Ashley was a seventh grader and Brooke was a fifth grader. I think that was first grade or kindergarten when you were. Okay, those are, oh, there we go. Who's that? Who is that up there? Is that you, Maddie? And Annabelle? Fifth grade and ninth grade. So do you like ninth grade? You haven't been in it long enough, have you? Yeah, that's Mallory and Allie. Oh, guess who that is? That's John when he went off to school. And there's another one over there. My sister-in-law's here from Texas. And that's her son, Tom. And they went fishing. And I have a feeling that that's exactly what they wanted to do the first day of school. They probably played hooky and went fishing. Uh-oh. Who do you think that is? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me and my brother. That was a long time ago. So... We've all had our first day of school, haven't we? Many times. And while it's exciting and it's new and you get a new teacher and you get to do new fun things, and you're going to get to do it all for the first time, the cool thing is we never quit learning. And we never get quit being able to go and teach other people. And so today we are going to do a backpack blessing. So you brought your backpacks up. Maddie has mine. Maddie has yours, okay? Jack, uh, I keep calling you Jack. Okay, what? We don't have your backpack, but you know what? We are going to say a blessing on you and your teacher, okay? Yes. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what? And we thank you for his teacher teachers that he's going to have here as he embarks on preschool. This is so exciting. We ask that you would be with him and you would just teach him about your love and expand his mind. In your name we pray. 
Okay, Maddie, we have your backpack. Did you bring it? That one's Maddie's. Okay. It's a lot of hers. Okay. All right, we are going to say a prayer on your backpack and you. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with Maddie and not just her backpack, but that you would hold and be a special blessing to everything that it holds and that she will learn and that she can be your witness to the kids in her classroom. We ask a special blessing on her teachers and everybody who works with her to give them the strength and the wisdom to help her succeed this year. Amen. All right, and this one's Annabelle's. All right, we'll put our hand on that and you. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless Annabelle's backpack and Annabelle and her teachers and her classmates as she embarks on this exciting year of school. May you bless her and expand her wisdom and her knowledge and let her be a light for you. Amen. All right, we've got Ashley's. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with Ashley as she takes off to another state. <laughs> I know where she's going. She's going to get a lot of Jesus and a lot of you. But dear Lord, we just thank you so much for that. Because we know you have big things. You've changed her path. And you're going to use her to touch so many lives in so many places. Whether it be in college or with kids. And we thank you for that opportunity. So I brought my computer back. <laughs> yeah. I'm now going to be an adult. Oh, and I need adult. a job. No backpacks. No backpacks. But you're going to touch so many. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask a special blessing on Chantel as she has now left school. And she is embarking on this exciting journey. And we don't know where you've got in mind to take her, but we are just trusting that where you put her, you are going to put her in the path to touch so many people and let her be a light to you to just spread that gospel and to let them know how much you love them. Amen. Okay, Brooke. Oh, city. <laughs> that's just algebra. Oh, that's not algebra. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Brooke and Don, as I know his backpack is just as heavy. We ask that you would put a special blessing on them as they embark on sports and music and FFA and all the different activities as well as their classroom. We ask that you would be with them, that you would help give them the energy to keep going, that you would give them the strength for all the long hours and nights, but the most importantly, that they could remember that they are a child of you, and they do represent you to all their classrooms and all the other kids that they're going to come in contact with from other schools. And we ask that you would just let them be a light for you. Amen. Okay. Well, let's say a prayer for all the teachers, because they're the ones that are going to need it. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we, we ask a special blessing on all the teachers on all the communities around, right here in Aurora and Cool and York and Grand Island and Giltner and all the surrounding Hampton, that you would be with them and give them strength and that you would touch their lives so that way when they look at these kids, they see you through them and they can best teach them to each child's ability. We thank you for all the teachers that are here today. We thank you for those who have retired that touch so many lives, but still continue as they come in contact with all the kids right here in church and in the community. And we thank you for those kids that are out and about throughout this nation that have not yet come to know you, that maybe somehow through touching the lives of those who your light shines through that they will get to come to know you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Well, I apologize about the PowerPoint because I actually spent a lot of time, had a lot of pictures and everything on it, and for some reason it completely crashed and it's all gone. So you're just going to have to take my word for it that there was more exciting stuff to look at. But we're looking at making disciples today. If you kind of noticed that through the hymns that we sang, and we're going to look from the words of Colossians 3, 23 through 24. And whatever you do, that's what we read, do it heartily as the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive your reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, do it heartily. 
as I said, we're never done learning, are we? We are always students, and we're always learning. In fact, I can almost guarantee that most of you sitting here in the pews right now started out on one path in high school, and probably changed that path if you went to college or to work. And I bet you throughout your life, you've changed that path again, and you continue to learn. You continue to grow. God keeps continuing to expand the people that you've had the ability to touch and to share your faith with. Well, the word disciple, it actually means, and I love this, it means learner. Is that not what we all are? It denotes one who follows another's teacher, or it could be what? Imitators. Now, you know, by having kindergartners and first graders, how many of them like to play school? Yeah, I have kids that that's what they love to do. They would play school all the time. They're imitators. They pick up everything we do, whether we like it or not. And Pat took off with Wyatt, but I can guarantee you, maybe that's why I call him Jack all the time, because he's watching you. He's an imitator. How many here know the song? I love that. Um, I'm even going blank. Help me, Chantal. What's the name of the country singer? Um, I've been watching you, Dad. Ain't that cool? I'm watching you. Uh, um, Josh Turner. Is it Josh no, Turner or Mike Sheldon? Rodney Atkins. Oh, Rodney Atkins. Okay. I don't know my country guys, but I love the song. And it's this whole song about a dad who has a five-year-old son who all of a sudden says something that he realizes, how did he know that? And the little kid says, I've been watching you, Dad. Ain't that cool? I'm your buckaroo. He's an imitator. And so he realized that he had to really watch what he was doing and he had to bring up his child right. And then the song continues to go into he's talking to God and he's imitating God, which then his son will hopefully imitate. That's really kind of the goal. Well, a true disciple, what makes a true disciple? It's one that has to deny themselves. And what does that mean to deny yourself? Or what does it mean? Jesus says, pick up your cross and carry it. It means that we have to deny our worldly, our, our carnal nature, the things that we want, the things that maybe we don't need, but we just want to do. If it's not what's in line with Christ, we're supposed to deny those things. If it's not edifying, if it's not pleasing, if it's not building you up or building up others, then we shouldn't be doing it, right? Well, I, uh, I was wondering about this as I thought today on the way here. You know, there's a lot of people who society would look at, hardened, hardened people, Hardened criminals that you would never even think, that never even darkened the door of a church, that never heard of Jesus Christ. And yet, when we talk about Jesus saying, go and make disciples, there is so much power in the gospel that it can take that hardened heart and in a moment, it can turn them into a believer. It can turn them into somebody now who is hungry for and wanting to hear gospel, wanting to hear more, wanting a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then we have those that have been pew sitters their whole lives. You probably know someone like that. Maybe you were or maybe you are one of those. You sat in pews your whole life in church because it was the thing to do. Because your family did it. Because you thought it was the right thing to do. But you never experienced the relationship with Jesus. You never experienced that gospel that completely changed your life. The power is so strong, I have seen it work in the hardened heart and in the person. Just one Sunday, something was said, and they jump up and they go, now I get it. I've been missing it all these years. How did I miss it? But now I have it, and I want it more. You know, when Jesus was with, his, was with his disciples, he sent them out, two by two, and then after his death and resurrection, he sent them out again to share the gospel with all nations. Now, why is that important? 
Because if you had some exciting news that you wanted to share, who would you be more apt to share it with? Your close little niche? The people you like? Or the people you don't like? And everybody else. It's really easy to fall into clicks, isn't it? To be really clicky. And to only want to interact with or talk with or share things with those that we are we like, to be honest. And Jesus says, no, no, no. And he was pointedly saying this for the Jews, because the Jews thought that the Messiah was only for the Jews. And so if Jesus was the Messiah, he was only for the Jews. And he says, no, 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 no. You're going to go through all nations, to the ends of the world, and you're going to tell the Gentiles. You are going to tell, oh my gosh, the Samaritans. You are going to tell the heathens. You are going to tell all those that the Jews did not like. The power of of the gospel. If you think about Christ's ministry, who did he spend most of his time with? It wasn't the Jews, other than his disciples. No, he was going into Gentile towns and preaching the good news. And they were very receptive to it, weren't they? The Jews? Uh, depending. Not quite so much. Well, let's jump to Saul. Saul, who had an encounter with Christ. But before that, Paul gets kind of a bad rap. He was a devout man. He was extremely religious. He was extremely intelligent. He had been a student. He had been an imitator of the Pharisees, of the Torah, of the law, but he had a narrow mindset. And so when the disciples went out spreading the good news, it infuriated him because it went against what he had thought, his own perceived idea of what the Messiah would be and how it should go forth. And so in great zeal, he thought he was doing his religious duty by going and rounding up all those Christians. They weren't Christians called that at the time. But all those people who were going counterculture to what he had always thought. And it wasn't until that fateful day on the road that he had an encounter with Jesus. And for him, because he was so hardened, it took more than just a, a knock off the horse. He had to be knocked off the horse and blinded before he saw the true light. And because of that, if you ever thought about his ministry, who does God send Paul to go talk to? It isn't the Jews. No, he sends Paul into all the Gentile nations, all of the communities, all the people that normally Paul would not have anything to do with. To share the good news. The saving grace of Jesus Christ. That's what being willing to surrender your own personal hopes and dreams and desires. We don't know what Paul's personal dreams are. Maybe he wanted to move up the ranks as a Roman soldier. Maybe he wanted to maybe someday aspire to be a Pharisee. We don't know, but he was willing to give up all those hopes and dreams. Look at the disciples. Look at the fishermen. And I don't think it was too hard for Matthew to give up being a tax collector. But they all gave up their own personal ideas of hopes and dreams to follow God's calling. I want to ask you, what dream have you had in your heart or you had that you so bad wanted to do but it just never seemed to materialize maybe that wasn't the direction God wanted you to go and maybe it had nothing to be counterculture with God maybe it was even something within that religious line but God just wanted you to go in a different direction were you willing to do it did you do it grudgingly or maybe God's still pulling you in a direction that you're refusing to go. If you talk to most people who have become pastors later in life, they will pretty much, I would say 90 to 95% will tell you the same story. God started calling me years ago, decades ago, and I kept running the other direction. Or I kept saying, later or after my kids are grown, or after I've done my other career, or after, yeah, right? 
We do that because we, that's the whole part of denying oneself, picking up one's cross and following Christ, which means when God says, I want you to make a change, you make the change now, not five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. That's why I've been so proud with my kids because when Chantel kept seeming to hit a wall, we talked about it. And I said, there's nothing wrong with being an FFA teacher. That's great. That's wonderful. But maybe that's just not the direction that God is calling you. And when she changed to ag leadership in education, everything just started to fall in place. When Ashley was looking at going to Kansas and everything just changed, I said, that's okay. I said, because who knows? She's still going in the same field. But who knows the people that God is going to put in your life? The people that you need to touch. When I was in radiology, I loved doing radiology. I loved being with the patients mostly. And I was good at what I did. But it was interesting, the patients that God would put in my path. When I first started out, and my story is not a whole lot different than the kids, um, everything just kept going wrong while I was in school with radiology. And I wasn't supposed to get to graduate with everyone. And I wasn't supposed to get to take boards when they did. And at the last minute, everything lined up so I could. The problem was that little hiccup and that delay there was such a shortage in Lincoln that they hired my whole class, and then there wasn't any positions left for me. I was the one left stuck without anything. And I'm like, well, I didn't really want to leave. I had a place in Lincoln. And so I prayed about it, and I wanted to do contract work, which means you work for a company, and they send you all over, and they pay for everything, and you make a little more money, and I thought that'd be cool. But they said, oh, we love you, but you have to be a tech for two years before we'll hire you. I said, well, that's crazy. I'm ready now. So I said, okay, I'll start my own business. So I let them out of the picture, cut out the middleman, <laughs> and I started my own contract work. And here's the cool thing. That was a God thing. Because I never knew where I was going to go, and I never knew how long I was going to be there, and I never knew who I was going to touch. How many here remember the show Quantum Leap? Yeah, okay. That was my life. <laughs> Quantum Leap was my life. Because I never knew where I was going to end up. And I never knew how long I was going to be there. But there was always somebody specific that I had to touch. And I never knew until it happened. And I was like, oh, this is the reason. Sometimes it was a doctor. Sometimes it was a patient. Sometimes it was another coworker. Sometimes it was somebody in that community. And then the minute that the task was accomplished, boom, I got the call to move somewhere else. It was exciting. It was a little nerve-wracking. I never knew what I was going to have a job or where I was going to be at. But the people that I got to touch for Jesus, who were struggling at that time in their life, people who had been Christians their whole life, some had strayed, some had, were just really struggling with something, some that never knew Christ, but then they did later. That's so cool that we had that opportunity to be a part of that. There's two commands that Jesus gives you. Take up your cross and follow him. No matter what that cross looks like. If it is your dreams, if it is your hopes, maybe it's your insecurities. Maybe you're scared of where he may put you. Maybe you don't want to feel vulnerable by being put out there not knowing what he wants you to say. You know, the scriptures are very poignant. He says, don't worry about what you will say or what you will do. Because the Holy Spirit will give you the words at that time. I am sure if each of you sit and think about that, there have been times in your life when you just looked up and you said, Lord, I have nothing. And all of a sudden, words started coming. The words that they needed to hear. And sometimes when we're saying it, we realize, oh, we needed to hear that too. And the second thing was, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When we went down to Oklahoma Westland, that was the complete opposite. We went to Kansas, and they didn't even talk about the chapel, except on the way back, they said, oh yeah, the chapel's over there, and once or twice a year, the team goes <laughs> together. That was it. 
And when we went to Oklahoma, they started in the chapel, <laughs> we basically ended at the chapel, and they have the most gorgeous, full, what was 40 feet tall, stained glass picture of the ascension of Christ. But it's not like some 1500s painting. It's Christ right there. And that's where the kids will actually graduate, going across that stage in front of Jesus. And I love what they said. They said everything was for a purpose. Because at the back of the chapel is a picture of the nativity, and at the front, the ascension. And they said they felt that in-between space where the kids sit is right where Jesus was at the most of his ministry, right there sitting and walking with us. And it won't be until graduation that they get to walk in front of the ascended Christ. But when we walked in, they said, we want you to know our main goal here is to turn you into those who can go out and be disciples for Christ, those who will touch lives, those who will share his light and shine his light in whatever occupation you're in, whatever sport you play in. I thought, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. But we've gotten away from that because it's counterculture. It's not good to talk about Christ. It's not good to talk about going to church. It's not good to talk about being that representative light to give the hope to those who are hopeless. So my question that I want to leave with you today, and the challenge, is I want you to think about your life. Those people that you have touched, that you never thought you would, and you recognized it, or maybe you didn't recognize it until I started talking today and all of a sudden the lights and the bells went off and you go, oh my gosh, I remember that person or I remember what I did. And two, I want you to ask Jesus right now that he would open up your mind and your eyes to those that he wants to put in your place right here in the near future that, that they can be imitators, not of you, but of the risen king. Amen.